Hello, my hungry friends. Doesn't this look delicious? I've got a super Polish dinner for you today. Potato pancakes served with this Hungarian style goulash with peppers and carrots and turkey and veggies. You're gonna love it. Welcome back friends, this is Polish Kitchen and today we are making a hungry influenced dish not hungry as in I'm, my stomach is empty but hungry as in country we're going to put a little bit of spice in our dish and you can't say that Polish food is bland because we're going to make it taste good we always make it taste good <laughs> take that back <laughs> so we're making a Hungarian style goulash and we're going to serve it over po Polish potato pancakes and we call them pancakes Placki po Węgiersku so pancakes a la Hungary how would you say this? I'm lost for words I would say call potato pancakes a Hungarian goulash yeah so I have two red bell peppers one is already charred in my bowl and I'm charring the second one so you can do this over a gas stove just put Wash your pepper, you know, probably don't even have to wash it. Uh, but place your pepper right on the burner and char the outside. And what that does is burns off the skin and then it's easier to take off. If you don't have a, a gas burner, you can put it in the oven under your roaster, not roaster. The broiler. Under the broiler, there we go. And then turn it as the skin burns, uh, it can burn off the skin. So the second one is burning. And my first one has burnt off and has been resting here under uh, under cover. And now we can, it's cooled off a little bit. So now I can just peel off the skin like this. See? And it also will, a lot of tiny bits will be left behind. And that will give our goulash or our pepper a little bit of flavor which that's what we want we want to infuse flavor into our sauce so I'm just gonna rinse this real quick under running water just to get some of these bits off and that one is burning nicely so I'm gonna give it a turn so it can burn on the other side as well were you scared of this? Well, I, <laughs> the, 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 the silicone um, oh, tongs was are not it made touching? for direct yeah, heat no. fire stuff. They are not. It gets a little melty. So our pepper is, the flesh of the pepper is nice and soft. But I'm going to just cut it off the... like this and remove actually this can't be in my garbage bowl because my second pepper has to go in and this will be in my garbage bowl and we want to slice this and this will go in our sauce when we're ready and these are just going to get sliced or probably diced so I'm going to slice them first And then into a smaller slice. And you may see a little bits of um, the skin still, but that's okay. And I like a nice and small dice. I just feel it looks a little bit more appetizing in my sauce. So I'll slice these and I'll burn this off and we'll see you back in a couple minutes. My bell pepper is resting. One is cut up, one is resting. We're steaming off the burnt skin and we're not using it until a little bit later in the recipe. So I'm just gonna let it go. I'll let it sit for a while and we'll continue with our recipe. So I want to infuse a bunch of flavor, not that we don't do that <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> but I wanna add a bunch of different spices to this. So I have uh, three different pepper powders. I have a regular sweet paprika, I have smoked paprika and I have chili powder just to make it a little bit spicy. 
And I also have this uh, mix of three peppers that you can get here in our wonderful country of Poland. It's, uh, it's pepper trio, so it's black pepper, green pepper, and red pepper. And they have a nice kind of almost lemony flavor, really fr nice and fresh, and a little bit spicy. And I have caraway seed. So since this is a whole caraway seed, I want to break it up a little bit. So I'm going to use a teaspoon of caraway seed. Just put it in my um, mortar and pestle. Pestle? Mortar and pestle. Mortar pestle. and pestle. And I'm also going to add about half a tablespoon of salt. My salt is a little bit more uh, granular or larger. <laughs> larger pieces because I'm using rock salt so I want to break it up a little bit so I'm putting it in here and I'm also gonna put this wonderful pepper tree I'm gonna do a whole uh, a whole teaspoon. So teaspoon and I'm gonna break these guys up together this is why I need you we're gonna be using turkey meat today um, Normally, I think a lot of the time this dish is prepared with pork, but we haven't done... I think we've done a lot of pork and beef recently, and not a, not a lot of poultry, so I figured we can try, try it with turkey. So, meat of choice, I'm using a turkey breast. I have about two pounds. If you're using pork, I would do... Uh, like a shoulder or if you can get raw ham that would actually be really nice as well I don't think you can find raw ham a lot in the States I don't, I don't ever remember seeing it but raw ham has got a nice kind of almost sweet flavor to it and it's really lean I guess you could do a, like a pork pork loin as well or even beef all right so that's that's pretty good so I'm gonna put these spices right on top of my turkey and mix it in a second. And I will also put all of my peppers. So chili powder, this will have to be <laughs> your personal preference. I'm gonna put about half a teaspoon and see what happens, huh? The chili powder she's using there, think closer to cayenne in America than our chili pepper in America. Is it so our chili spicy? powder in America that we use in making a chili Soupy chili type uh -huh. thing is different flavors than what we have here. Uh -huh, okay. And this is smoked paprika. I'm going to uh, go a full teaspoon on, on here as well. And I also have, this is just regular paprika. We call it swatka paprika, sweet paprika. So I'm going to do two, te two teaspoons of this. This is just going to be, do this will only do flavor and no spice. And I think that's it for now. Just going to give this a stir all these spices together with our meat lots of flavor kind of uh, hungarian influence in our polish kitchen came from uh, rich rich um, in the 15th 16th century rich people hiring chefs from all over the world and hungary was one of them so we have a little bit of influences from hungary and other European countries. So I'm gonna heat my pan and put some oil, probably about a tablespoon and a half. And I'm also gonna add, as soon as this is warm, I'm gonna put that in there. And I'm gonna put, I have three cloves of garlic and I'm gonna slice them today instead of crushing. Just so there's, you can see the pieces of garlic in there. So this will go in. And we want to get a nice sear on them. Probably should have waited another minute or so. But that's okay. Oh, there it goes. So we're gonna sear these, and as this is searing, I have two carrots, one parsley root, and a piece of celery root that will also flavor our, our, our sauce or our stock. So I'm just gonna give, <clears throat> give all of these a slice into a relatively thin slice. 
kind of like we do for other sauces that we make. This is searing nicely. I'm gonna give this a stir. And we don't have to worry about cooking this. We just want to get a little bit of color. I'm gonna add my garlic at this time. More flavor. And I also have the trio, because you can't make a sauce without the trio. So this is, I'm calling this a Polish trio. It's a bay leaf and a few berries of allspice and some peppercorns. And that, throw that in my sauce as well. And give this another stir. And then we're gonna cover this with water. Give this probably, I would give it about two or three minutes to get a little bit of color. And then we'll continue with the sauce. This is giving out a wonderful, wonderful flavor. I'm gonna add, I have three tablespoons of toma tomato paste. All of that is gonna go in. Again, more flavor. And then, stir this real quick. And then I'm gonna add some water. I want enough to cover all of our meat. So that's gonna be probably about four cups. And now our sauce needs to kind of marry and cook together for a little while till it gets nice and flavorful. The meat will be nice and soft. So I'm gonna set this aside to my back burner and we're gonna proceed with uh, our pancakes. But before that, I'm adding my sliced carrots and sliced uh, parsley, and I also have uh, celery root. If you don't have celery root or can't find celery root, just do a, one stalk of um, celery, just regular green celery, I guess. I'm gonna set this in the back and we'll switch for making our potato pancakes. Um, our stew, our Hungarian stew, is simmering in the back. I covered it and turned it down to medium-low, and we want it to go for about 20-25 minutes. If you're doing turkey, if you're doing uh, a little tougher meat like beef or pork, I guess you'd go a little bit long, about 10-15 minutes longer. But in the meantime, we'll go on to our pancakes. And if you've been on my channel before, one of the first videos on my channel were potato pancakes and they were pretty controversial <laughs> because I did them in a blender which I do a lot but uh, when I do potato pancakes in a blender I normally don't put anything on them because they are a little bit more moist and I want to get some of the moisture out of these potatoes before I fry them just because I'm gonna be putting a bunch of goulash on them so I'm gonna go kind of old school on this and use a shredder hand shredder and i'm saying kind of old school because i'm not using this uh this side of the box shredder that makes your potatoes kind of super granular and mushy i'm using this side which is the medium uh not the large one but the medium side and this will kind of leave uh, little strings of potatoes instead of like the mush that you would normally do for well, potato pancakes. So <clears throat> I have two pounds of raw potatoes that I've peeled and I've kept them in water so they don't tur turn black on me. And I have an onion here that I also would or need to. <laughs> and I'm not looking forward to this part because it's gonna turn my eyes completely red. But Grandma always said that onion keeps the potatoes from going brown when you're making pancakes. So I always start with the onion. Ta-da! 
All right, that's good enough. <laughs> and I know you're gonna give me a bunch of tips what to do, wet your lemon or wet your onion, wet your hands, turn the oven on, open the window. It doesn't work. <laughs> I have to open the window. So, I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing, and then I'm gonna do it off camera, so you don't have to laugh at me very much. But I have a uh, cheesecloth over a strainer that is over a bowl. So I'm gonna uh, shred all my potatoes, and then collect myself, <laughs> and then when all the potatoes are in here, I can strain a little bit, but we'll get to it when I come back. All right, we, uh, group effort. We have gotten, we've gone through the two pounds of potatoes. It wasn't easy, as you can tell from my red eyes. <laughs> but, uh, so we got this, we have this, and now we, I want to get, as mentioned, I want to get the moisture out of this. So I take, put this together, and squeeze it out like this. You can smell the onion in it. That's close enough. And then I'm gonna let this sit for about a couple of minutes. So the water, oh, not the water, the potato starch is gonna go to the bottom of the bowl and I wanna save that, but I'm gonna pour out the water and just leave the um, potato starch on the bottom and I'm gonna add it to my potatoes. So I'll let it sit for a couple of minutes. So ideally, we want to have our goulash prepared and ready to serve before we are done with our pancakes. So we're pausing the pancakes for a second just to finish our sauce. Um, so I have four tablespoons of all-purpose flour in here. And I'm just adding uh, cold water, about uh, three quarters of a cup or so. And I'm gonna put a lid on this. Cold water. Not no, that's our Lucy. She requires attention immediately. <laughs> so give this a nice shake, make sure there's no lumps. And then we're gonna go into our sauce. And our peppers are both now sliced, steamed, peeled, and sliced. And I'm just gonna remove the cover. Add my pepper to it. It's got a beautiful color. All those flavors are marrying up together. And I'm gonna turn up my heat a little bit because I wanna bring this to boil. And as it comes up to boil, it'll thicken our sauce a little bit. and It'll be nice and saucy for or for our pancakes. So as this is sitting here and finishing, we can go, look how nice and creamy it is. This is a nice looking sauce. Have you seen my trick with potato starch? That white stuff on the bottom is what we want to keep and this water I'm just gonna drain off. And to this I'm adding our, our, <laughs> our potatoes <laughs> and to our potato batter. See how dry it is? It's gonna fry up nicely. Make sure to get that starch from the bottom of the bowl. And our potatoes didn't turn brown too badly, so that's nice. So to this I'm adding two teaspoons of salt if you're washing your salt, maybe you want to go a little bit less. And then another note, so this amount of potato pancakes is probably uh, enough for about half of the stew. The stew uh, recipe is a, a lot larger, so if you want to have more potato pancakes, I would double this recipe. But we can also eat the stew with potatoes, it doesn't have to be potato pancakes. Or What else could we eat it with, like a grain or something, or even pasta would be nice, eh? Yeah. So if you want to match the amount of pancakes to the stew, I would double the amount of 
uh, potatoes. So you'd go four pounds of potatoes, four eggs. So two eggs go in here. One, two. And we're gonna do half a cup of flour. Oh, I'm making a mess. And we're gonna just combine these together. And I'm gonna start my pan for frying. Again, grandma would use lard because that's just the way they cooked back then. But I'm gonna use, um, this is grapeseed oil. And you wanna get a little bit on the bottom. So when potatoes hit it, they have somewhere to sit, but this is not deep frying. And give this a good stir. And these potato pancakes will be a little bit less uh, moist from the ones that you do, that I would normally do in a blender. Just a little bit more texture to these. Super simple recipe though. All right, so when oil is hot, I'm just gonna turn it down just a tiny bit. I'm gonna scoop on, oh, maybe not quite, but it's coming. Hello. Just make, uh, so I normally, this is served with, like for a person my size, <laughs> I would do three pancakes and then some goulash on top. How many do you think you would want for a serving? Uh, me four to five. Okay, so. Of this size because I, I, I am not eating for health, I'm eating for, I'm built for comfort, not for speed. So I could do five, that's like my portions right there. Four? Five. Oh yeah, no five or six. Okay, seven. so seconds. <laughs> so I put a little bit of a little bit of the batter or pancake batter, whatever you want to call it, on, and I flattened it flattened it a little bit, just so it kind of uh, cooks evenly. So we're gonna give this a couple of minutes on each side, but we want them nice and golden brown, and we want them cooked on the inside. Uh, but they the dough is really looking really nice. I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Because sometimes, like I said, do the onion first. <laughs> Punish yourself with the onion. <laughs> and then... <laughs> I tried to make these for you when you had COVID. And I screwed it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they didn't look like this. What did you do? How did you go wrong? I don't even remember. I think you... <laughs> did you do raw potatoes? No, I boiled them first. Oh, you that's the... That's what I screwed it up on. <laughs> I didn't follow your recipe. <laughs> no. You just, you're not a wing it kind of guy. No. Which, uh, I kind of in the kitchen I am. I cook from feel. Uh, a lot of the recipes I do is by, I need to add a little bit more, but a little bit less or a little bit more. And then it's the same story with my daughter as I hear a lot from what you're saying about how your family was. Grandma would just add, or mom or dad or whoever, auntie would add a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and then once they're, they pass, we have zero reference. And since, since I kind of grew up eating this food all the time and I saw it being made, one gazillion times. I think I have a good gauge of what to do and how to handle different ingredients. So my pancakes are kind of getting nice and golden brown on the edges. Can you see? So I'm gonna give this first one a flip. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is what we want to see. This is not what I wanted. 
Are you a happy man already? <laughs> <laughs> you know, emotions over yeah. here about these. They smell nice already. And if you haven't seen my video on potato pancakes, go back into the list and, and watch that one. But w potato pancakes in my house like this were always served with sour cream and sugar. And I just love this combination of savory, there's no sugar in these obviously, the savory pancake and the cold sour cream and then a little bit of sugar sprinkled on top. I think it's a combination that is made in heaven. I love it and uh, that's how we've always had it at home. Are you a fan of the sugar? No, sour cream no and sugar? I'm all about the goulash. You're all about the goulash. I am, uh, uh, potatoes, gotta be savory to me gravy ketchup i'm just not no yeah would you look at that isn't that just gorgeous mm -hmm. all right so my Pancakes are done, so we're going to do three, because I like uneven numbers. Like this. And look how beautiful this goulash is. It's got, oh, I got a nice army spoon. <laughs> The peppers are in there and it thickened nicely. The veggies give us, uh, make us feel a little bit better, it's not just meat and potatoes. Mark likes it on top. I like it off to the side, so I'm gonna leave one off. Perfect, eh? Now I'm gonna cut away a piece of pancake first because I wanna try. Nicely cooked. Mm, 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 mm. I just love potato pancakes. But I love how this little bit larger shred kind of can sustain or can support the sauce a little bit better. And now I'm gonna do a little piece of potato pancake and a little bit of the turkey and the pepper, because it's all sassy. <laughs> You'll get some in a minute. <laughs> mm. So the meat is nice and tender by now. The sauce has a little bit of spice in it. You can taste the tomatoey and the bell pepper in it, and then all the peppers that we've put in it. I think you'll be happy with this as uh, a Sunday dinner even. I hope to try this. I hope you visit my website, poetrykitchen.com, and come back again and cook with us. And we'll see you next time. And smart Don't be there.